Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to go over a type of paper one question may appear perhaps on a paper two with the new economic syllabus, and that is looking at this macroeconomic concept in regards to increases in aggregate demand and the impact on the price level. And this question or a question referring to this concept of increases in aggregate demand and the impact on the price level is testing the student's understanding of the monetarist model versus the Keynesian model. So let's go ahead and graph the monetarist model and look at the impact on the price level. And then we'll take a look at the Keynesian model. And then we will analyze this as we would for a paper exam. So on the monetarist model, we need to illustrate the long run aggregate supply curve. Right, which is perfectly inelastic. Right, and we'll go ahead and label that long run aggregate supply, LRES. And that represents full potential GDP, the long run growth trend as reflected in the uh, business cycle. Here we are fully employing the resources that we should be employing in order to get the amount of output that we should be producing. Okay. In addition to that, we'll need the aggregate demand curve which is downward sloping according to the wealth effect, interest rate effect, and the international trade effect. We're going to label that AD1. And we see that the equilibrium between AD1 and LRS provides an equilibrium price level. All right, so that's at point A, which I'll label in just a second, and I will go ahead and label that as price level one, or prices of goods and services on average in the economy. All right, and that is point A. Okay, now one way of uh, illustrating this is that we can illustrate the AD curve and the LRS curve, or if we wanted, we could also include the SRS curve to discuss what would happen to the price level if AD was to shift. And we've seen this in previous videos. We have the SRS curve, which we'll label. And we're starting at point A, and perhaps as a result of low interest rates, we have households and firms borrowing money to spend or invest, which would lead to increased consumption and investment spending. And we've seen how that leads to the AD curve shifting outward, perhaps from 81 to 82. It establishes a new equilibrium at point B increasing real GDP, I'll draw that with a straight line, increasing real GDP from YP to Y inflation, and increasing the price level from PL1 to PL2. Okay, so we've seen before that any increase in the aggregate demand curve along an upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve will lead to the price level rising, in this case from PL1 to PL2. We also see that real GDP increases from YP to Y inflation. In addition, we see that the quantity of aggregate demand along the SRES curve from point A to point B increases. Firms are incentivized to increase their quantity of aggregate supply, employing more resources, land, labor, and capital, to meet the increase in the aggregate demand at point B. There is no cyclical unemployment, but we see that structural, frictional, and seasonal unemployment is decreasing. So we have unemployment at Y inflation less than full employment or the natural rate at YP. So we could illustrate this to highlight how in the monetarist model, any increase in area of demand leads to an increase in the price level. That is one way of answering that question. Another way to answer that is just using the LRS curve and the uh, aggregate demand curve. So we can illustrate the same concept and highlighting the difference between the monetarist model and the Keynesian model by doing this. All right, just give me a second. And we're going to start to graph this again, but without the LRES curve. Okay, almost there. 
So again, LRES. YP, perfectly inelastic. And we'll have our downward sloping area demand curve, initially labeled 81. And it sets an equilibrium price level at point A with price level at PL1. Prices of goods and services on average in the macro economy at PL1. And again, we can highlight that as a result of, let's say, low interest rates households and firms borrow money and spend it and invest it. Consumption and investment spending rises. That causes AD to shift out from 81 to 82. We notice that any shift in the aggregate demand curve causes a rise in the price level from PL1 to PL2. All right. No change in real GDP, we're gonna assume that to be the case, we're going from point A to point B. And we can reiterate again that any shift in AD, perhaps there's high consumer confidence, high business confidence, perhaps the level of household indebtedness or corporate indebtedness has fallen, freeing up more money for households and firms to spend, consumption investments been increasing. So we see that shift from 82 to 83. And again, we see that the price level rises from PL2 to PL3. No change in real GDP, holding that constant at YP. So this is one great way to illustrate how any increase in aggregate demand leads to an increase in the price level in the mantras metal and vice versa. Any decrease in the aggregate demand curve will lead to an immediate fall in the price level. This is to be contrasted with the Keynesian aggregate supply curve. So we're gonna go ahead and illustrate that. So we have the initial section, which uh, in the previous video we've called section one. It's perfectly uh, elastic or horizontal. In section two, we start to get some increase in the price level because resources be begin to become scarce and firms begin to compete for those resources. Resource prices rise, thus, price level begins to rise. And then we have the perfectly inelastic section of section three, where our firms are fully employing all inputs, and this is the most amount of in, uh, outputs that we can get in the economy. So we're gonna call that the Keynesian aggregate supply curve. And there's another video that goes into detail describing these three sections. Okay. Let me go ahead and lower this because we're going to make some notes below. We're measuring real GDP on the y-axis. Now, a great way to highlight the, the difference between the Keynesian model and the Montres model is to have four aggregate demand curves along this Keynesian aggregate supply curve. So I'll have 81 in the recessionary gap. And that will be point A. And we see that the price level is at PL1. In addition, we see that real GDP is at, I'll call this Y recession one. We have unemployed resources, unemployment greater than the natural rate. There is spare capacity in the economy. And because of the phenomenon of sticky prices, such as minimum wage, it places a type of price floor on the economy where resource prices cannot fall be below PL1, and thus output prices do not fall. Again, we can state that uh, perhaps uh, household indebtedness is falling, corporate indebtedness is falling, perhaps uh, interest rates begin to fall. That leads to increased borrowing or increased consumption and investment spending. So AD starts to shift out, and we're gonna keep it in the recessionary gap. So perhaps it goes to 82. We have a new equilibrium at point B. Real GDP is beginning to increase from Y recession to Y recession two. But unemployment at point B is still greater than the natural rate. And so there's no upward pressure on resource prices like wages, and thus there's no up upward pressure 
on output prices. So prices stay at PL1. So here we can see that an increase in aggregate demand does not impact the price level in this horizontal section, or what would I would call section one of the aggregate supply curve. Yes, we get a change in GDP. It increases from Y recession to Y recession two, but there is no change in the price level due to the spare capacity that still exists in the economy, the uh, high level of unemployed resources that exists in the economy. Okay, so that's a big contrast to the monetarist model. Any shift in the monetarist model, NAD leads to a change in the price level. That is not the case in the Keynesian model when we are operating in this horizontal section. Then we could state that uh, perhaps interest rates falls, households and firms borrow more money to increase their consumption investment spending, and aggregate demand shifts out to 83, from 82 to 83. And we're now entering this section two of the Keynesian aggregate supply curve. We'll call it 83, that sets a new equilibrium. At point C, resources are beginning to become scarce. Firms are competing for these scarce resources. So there's upward pressure on wages, perhaps rent, interest for land, labor, and capital. As the resource prices rise, the output prices begins to rise. So price level begins to rise from PL1 to PL2. And the real GDP rises from Y recession 2 to, we'll call this full potential GDP at YP. Okay, so if aggregate demand increases in section two of the aggregate supply curve, yes, the price level changes from PL1 to PL2, and real GDP also rises. Again, perhaps um, business confidence is rising, household confidence is rising, or consumer confidence is rising. That leads to increased consumption investment spending, so we can have aggregate demand shift out from 83 to 84, now we're operating in section three of the Keynesian aggregate supply curve, this vertical section. And here again, we see that a change in aggregate demand leads to a change in the price level and a change in um, real GDP. So price level rises from PL2 to PL3. Dramatic rise in the price level there. and also a slight increase in real GDP from YP to Y inflation. In section three, this vertical section, you have firms competing with each other to get the resources they need to increase their aggregate supply to meet the increased aggregate demand. And because that competition for scarce, scarcer and scarcer resources, Wages, rent, interest is rising for land, labor, capital. That leads to output prices rising from PL2 to PL3 without much of a change in real GDP. We've employed all of our inputs. This is the most amount of output we can get. Any change in aggregate demand in section three just leads to a change in the price level. Okay, so this is what would be useful to illustrate to answer this question. Increase in AD, what's the impact on price level? Well, it depends for using the mattress and the key. And so I'm gonna go ahead and analyze this as we would for a paper exam, and, and then we'll be done. So as can be seen, we have two graphs, graphs A. Graph A is illustrating the mattress model. Graph B is illustrating the Keynesian model. And we're gonna use these two models to illustrate the idea of what is the impact of increase in aggregate demand on the price level. In graph A and B, we're measuring real GDP on the x-axis and price level on the y-axis. Graph A, we have three downward sloping aggregate demand curves labeled 81, 82, 83. They are downward sloping according to the wealth, the wealth effect, the interest rate effect, and the international trade effect. Where 81 equals the long run aggregate supply curve at point A establishes a price level at PL1 with real GDP at YP. As a result of falling interest rates, households and firms borrow funds to spend and invest. Consumption spending increases, investment spending increases. Thus, we see an increase in aggregate demand from 81 to 82. That leads to a rise in the price level from PL1 to PL2, where 82 equals the LRAS curve at point B. No change in real GDP at YP.
Perhaps household indebtedness is falling, corporate indebtedness is falling, that provides more disposable income for households and firms to spend. Consumption spending rises, uh, investment spending rises, that causes 82 to shift out to 83. This causes yet again an increase in the price level from PL2 to PL3. So the Montrose model illustrates that any increase in aggregate demand leads to an increase in the price level, leads to an automatic increase in the price level. This should be contrasted with the Keynesian model in graph B. Here we can see we have the Keynesian aggregate supply curve, a horizontal section, section one, which illustrates a recessionary gap, unemployed resources, unemployment here is greater than the natural rate and there is spare capacity in the economy. Then in section two, the aggregate supply curve begins to slope upward. Here we begin to employ most of the, most of the resources that we need to provide the goods and services that should be provided when we fully employ our resources. That leads to a marginal change in real GDP and a marginal change in the price level. And the vertical section of the aggregate supply curve that's perfectly inelastic highlights the full, full employment of all resources, land, labor, and capital, all inputs employed, providing a fixed quantity of outputs. Where here, there's basically no change in real GDP, but a dramatic change in the price level. Looking at where 81 equals the Keynesian aggregate supply curve at equilibrium point A, it provides an equilibrium price level at PL1 and an equilibrium level of real GDP at Y recession one. Unemployment here is greater than the natural rate. Perhaps uh, there is rising consumer and business confidence leading to increased consumption and investment spending. That causes the aggregate demand curve to increase from 81 to 82, providing a new equilibrium at point B where 82 equals the Keynesian aggregate supply curve. But we notice that the price level is stable at PL1 because there is still unemployed resources and spare capacity. There is no upward pressure on resource prices. So real GDP rises from Y recession one to Y recession two, but there is no change in the price level. Then as we have interest rates perhaps falling, households and firms borrow and spend, consumption investment spending rises, that causes 82 to shift to 83, setting a nuclear room at point C, there's a slight rise, a marginal increase in the price level from PL1 and PL2, and a marginal increase in real GDP, real GDP from Y recession 2 to YP. Here, resources are becoming scarcer. Firms begin to compete for land, labor, and capital. That puts upward pressure on wages, rent, and interest. As, and as the input prices rise, the output prices rise, as reflected in the rise in the price level from PL1 and PL2. And perhaps as continued uh, consumer and business confidence rises or as interest rates falls, firms begin to borrow and spend, households borrow and spend, that causes aggregate demand to shift from 83 to 84, setting a nuclear at point D, dramatic increase in the price level as households and firms uh, compete for finite outputs or inputs. And we see a marginal increase in real GDP, real GDP from YP to Y inflation. So this would be the models to be illustrated to answer the question related to increases or changes in aggregate demand. What is the impact on the price level? Again, it depends. In the monetarist model, it leads to a, uh, a change in the price level always. In the Keynesian model, it depends if you're in section one, two, or three, whether or not there's a change in the price level. And that's it. In the information section below, I will provide a full outline of uh, the analysis of these two models. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment and don't forget to subscribe and to like. Thank you so much.